Hello and welcome to Guy Logic. My name is Temko and today we are taking a look at a game called Overfall. Now the game is coming out on early access on March 1st and you might be wondering, say Temko, why are you reviewing a early access title? And the reason for that is that I normally don't do early access, but I'm making an exception for Overfall because it's leaving such an amazing impression on me. So far. So the game is brought to you by Para Games, who have successfully kickstarted this game about a year ago. They're an indie team from Turkey, and uh, they're trying to make this little RPG roguelike, roguelite kind of game. So let's go ahead and dive in some overfall. I'm gonna go into the options and the story builder as well, because I think the story builder is what's going to make or break this game on launch. And if they implement this properly, which I feel they have, uh, even though it's not done or not fleshed out as fully as it should be, then they'll have a gem on their hands. First things first, options. This is it. Ethics, music, resolution, and the monitor you want to display it at. Um, developer, get on this. This is not okay. Yes, the game is a artsy, 2D-ish game that doesn't really need all the fancy schmancy options, but this is disgraceful. At least add colorblind mode, or... There are a couple of different ways to uh, display things. I don't even know what else you might want. At least a windowed or full screen mode. Because the game runs in full screen window, does not constrain mouse to window. So, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Get on this developer. This is not okay. First, we're going to go into some. So, yeah, options. That's it. First, we're going to go into new game. And then uh, I'll show you Story Builder and what that means for the new game. So, new game wise, you start off with two heroes. You can unlock a bunch of classes. I have three unlocked. You start with two. I have a wizard, and you can unlock these classes in-game. So the rogue says, Hey, a tavern whispers of a dark lady who recruits the sneaky and cocky to carry out terrible deeds of the Forsaken. Now, sneaky and cocky are two traits you can unlock on your characters based on encounters. So you have to first get these traits and then go to a tavern and unlock. Same goes for the wizard, the same goes for the druid. All of them have unlocked requirements. Once you unlock them, you can get things. Every class has a special ability that, uh, do, that does something. The, hero, the heroic leap is something for the fighter. And blink, which is a uh, short range teleport, is that for the wizard. Other than that, you have weapons. I've not unlocked any extra weapons, but there is a couple of weapons and each again has unlock hints. Weapons do different things. They give you different attacks. Again, every class has about five weapons. And each class has a bunch of skills tied to those weapons. Skills wise, you have a bunch of skills you can unlock. Again, all of this is unlocked through gameplay. And the same goes for trinkets and the like. So you have a bunch of things you can unlock to each successive gameplay. This is also where the rogue light elements come from. Once you die, you have to start from scratch. But you don't really start from scratch. You start by starting with what you've unlocked. So every playthrough, you unlock a few things. I unlock a wizard and I unlock a companion, which is an NPC you can recruit, and so forth and so on. And this allows you to further and further practice the game. The game is designed in such a way as you will probably need to die couple of times to get the necessities to unlock a win condition. You may be lucky and get all the good luck you can get, but uh, I think you will find that the game is a bit harder than it appears from its cutesy graphics, and it is a quite a bit more interesting than I originally expected. So, once you start the game, each encounter is based on a couple of choices. Your choices are either giving answer to a question, like I have here, and then you will get some dialogue, and you get some more dialogue. Some more dialogue. And if you have different characters, for example, you'll get this yellow bubble. This yellow bubble means that you have a skill, a trait, or the necessary stats to unlock a hidden event. So this could be something like being able to uh, get away out of a fight with elves or dwarves or orcs. This could be something as being able to get a better trade deal for your goods. There's quite a few of these in the game. So if I press this, they'll say, well, um, I'm going to give you this, which is to frag. I'll get to that in a little bit. So if I didn't have those stats or the requirements for that, I would never get an option. I would be able to get these two, this item on the start of the game. That's it. We sail off. And then uh, the game says, skip the feedback. The game has a feedback UI. You can enable that in options. Actually, let me turn off feedback UI for the purpose of this demo. After that, you come out in the overworld. The overworld is you on your ship sailing to a bunch of islands. And let me explain the UI to you and what is going on here and there. These islands have different types. For example, this is a swamp island which contains an inn. 
This is a barren island, a Greenland's island, a volcanic island, and each island is habited by a specific type of people. You guessed it, you have dwarves, you have elves, you have orcs, you have goblins, you have hollows, which are cursed humans, or undead, and you have the forsaken. Um, oh sorry, the forsaken are the undead, and uh, the hollows are uh, beastmen, so cursed humans. Each of them you have reputations with. You gain reputation by doing objectives and quests on these islands. And uh, you're time bound as a mysterious invader is pouring out and they are um, trying to kill you. And they might actually. They might. So let's dive into when you, once you reach an island, you just let me sail to an island. And I've reached an island. Once you reach an island, encounters start. If you're in an inn, you'll start going to inn. You can order food and talk to some people. If you're in a bazaar, you can trade. And if you come to any other island, you either get sent off because you're on a settlement island and you do not have the reputation to be there, or you get one of a ton of randomized encounters. I mean a metric ton. This is one I haven't seen yet, and I'm, I think, 17 hours into the game, so that's a lot. Okay, so let me explain the UI and how it goes. Again, the same here. There is two choices. I can either agree to help the cute hollow puppy to bring him a bone to chew on, or I can leave. I'm going to agree to help. It says there's a graveyard nearby and you can dig up a bone easily. Well, let's head to the graveyard. Now, you're in the graveyard and pick a spot to dig. You have three spots. I'm going to just dig to the right. Seems reasonable. And there we go. There was a bunch of undead buried there and I've disturbed them and now I have to fight. And this is a good moment to go into the combat mechanics, the health mechanics, and all like. The health and combat mechanics are based on your character's stats. For example, if I go up here to Christian, who is a fighter, he has accuracy 14, defense 10, health 28. And Jillian has health 22. Initiative, speed, critical chance, his trinkets, all of these play a role in what they can do. And you can uh, upgrade these trinkets as I said earlier in the game where you also select your class and the like. You can look, also look at the enemies and see their stats and see what they have. To perform an action, combat is split up in three actions, three parts. First there is movement. So if I want to move forward, I can move a couple of tiles forward in this hex based system. Followed by a buff, utility uh, or attack. So I have no way to reach him, so I'm going to buff myself. There we go. And these go on a cooldown for two turns. And then I have an attack, because I melee, I do not have a way to do attack, so I can press the skip button, and that's it. I'm gonna have my wizard move forward as well, but he has a attack I can reach, which is a stun. Now, he casts a stun on him, which triggers chilled and immobilized, and here it only triggers immobilized. Now, chilled has the critical rate, so these guys, if he crits, if he has a crit chance, it is halved. And he's immobilized, so he cannot move the next round. So there's that. Also, I have an attack. I'm going to do Lightning Bolt, because that too is AoE. And hit them both for a bit of damage. Their turn. They're not allowed to move. He buffs himself. That's it. He does a attack. He has range. And he can do that. Next up is Heroic Leap. I'm going to jump in here. Do them a bunch of damage. Incapacitate this dude. Which is also an ability I have, which does applies this time by immobilized. And you can see all these buffs and debuffs appear on the screen. You can read them slowly and carefully. So the game is really more of a strategy game uh, combined with um, RPG than it is a rogue light. Rogues, you don't really get items, and that's really it. You get items and you have to upgrade these items later on in the game. You don't really unlock skills uh, in most situations. Here, your skills and your strategy on how to fight enemies is really important. Fights that are really simple with one mob type or with one champion type could turn out to be really, really hard with another one. A good example of that is, if I didn't bring my wizard, I brought my cleric, I could uh, use a buff to heal the damage I take. So that's really important. Now, I buffed him, and um, I'm just going to do some more damage on this dude. There. Thunderbolt does a bit of damage, so that's how combat goes. And you can see how these dude dudes got a bunch of damage. He has fear, and this one runs away a little bit, and damages me here. Now this one ran away, so that's kind of annoying, because it's his turn now, and he can't get in range. I used my leap earlier, so that was not my best uh, move, but I can break this and unlock a bunch of stuff that way. Skip attack phase, 
and that is that. Skip move with for this plan. See if I can't hit both of them with another immobilize. I can, very good. And I can chain lightning. A chain lightning attacks targets that are adjacent to it. Or lightning orbs. So that's a bit of a question. Hmm, it deals plus one damage if the target has been immobilized. It has been, good. Down from heaven, four damage, and he is dead. Now this guy now has gotten, gotten enraged. And this is a mechanic I don't like so much in the game, because it adds an element of random chance to a fight that isn't random. So, all the game is much uh, random involvement. All the encounters are randomized, uh, the way the game interacts with you is randomized, the encounters you get or the things you can unlock are often randomized. So that is all pretty random. But once you get into the combat, there is no randomization. Everything is either percentage based, so you know what you're getting into, or pre-planned, except for in range. In range happens when the last target is alive, sometimes, it doesn't always happen. And that is really annoying because it prevents you from planning ahead properly for a fight. Right now this one is enraged, he has a fear of my mage, and my mage is really low from all the damage. So my mage can move forward and teleport, because thankfully he can do that. He can buff himself. And do Thunderbolt. There we go. This land moves, runs away again. So it comes a bit of a game of uh, chase the monkey. Oh damn, that hurts. Thankfully, I have jump again. Get in there. Incapacitate. And execute. There. Now, after combat, you sometimes get these traits. For example, Christian, which is my fighter, has unlocked the trait Rigorous, which increases his accuracy. And you can unlock these by fighting, by performing quests, by interaction, you get them on a random set of events. And these either make your character better, but they can also make your character worse. One I had previously was after a very long fight where my uh, fighter was at very low hit points the entire fight, he got the trait Craven, which would make him do a fair check whether or not he would be terrified at the start of each turn. Obviously not an exactly a good trait. Now I haven't found ways to remove traits from the game. Um, if you're playing and you get a trait, I'm not sure how you can remove them. I haven't found a way to do that. But as you see, I just got Hollow Reputation plus one and I got six frags. This is a good as any moment to talk about the resource and currency in the game. The currency in the game, oh I'm getting boarded actually. This is gonna be a fight I lose. Um, the currency in the game is frag which you use to buy stuff on a bazaar or food from a tavern. Then you have dust, which is something that is used for a few things. You can use it to upgrade skills when you meet trainers, which sail around the world. So if you want to upgrade your fighting skills or your mage skills, you can do that using trainers and you need dust for that. Then you have runes. Um, you can use these to resurrect people that have died on altars and you can also use them to cast protection on characters that have not yet died. So that's pretty impressive. Also, you use them to hire companions. You can have up to two extra companions bringing your party to a total of four. And lastly, you have food, which is the thing you eat to heal your party, which I haven't done before. And now I got attacked by these guys. So that's kind of wank. It's also important to note that I'm gonna, I'm gonna die here because I can't fight them at this low health. So I'm just gonna surrender and uh, lose my progression. I have to unlock anything this turn. I have 32 score. That's really it. Restart the game. Go straight back to the start and you restart once. This is really uh, how the game tries to portray yourself going forward. Now you can uh, change your uh, character names left and right. That is really it. So what makes this game so interesting and so great to me? The overworld has a five stage story that unlocks as you gain reputation and as time progresses. So the more you sail, the more time progresses and the more things unlocked. Those guys that just attacked me, all the Varn, they're the big evil bad guys as far as I've seen that slowly take over all the islands. So there is definitely a time constraint bonus. Each run will last you between mine, which was just 10 minutes, up to three or four hours, which was my best tries. The game also has a ton of replayability, obviously, because each run you can focus on unlocking things, you can focus on completing the story, you can focus on exploring different avenues for attack, or just different class combinations. So this gives you a lot of replayability. Now if I go back to the main menu, there is a story builder. All of these things combined 
make for the game. Each island is a contained experience and story in and of itself. There's a bunch of islands in the game. I think there's around 200. But you can add more. You can add more to the Steam Workshop. And I'm going to show you how that works. And this is something they are still developing. Which is the main reason the game is in early access. So this is probably the part that is still subject to change. I do not expect the game experience overall to change much from now to release. They have said that the core gameplay loop they have implemented, which is that as you see, sail from island to island, encounter, decide whether or not you want to do anything to that encounter, gain reputation, and proceed from there. They have not decided if they want to add anything there, but what is probably going to happen will be that the story builder is going to change from here on out. So let's dive into the story builder and I'll tell you how that works and what is going on there. As I said, the story builder is probably going to be where the game gets most of its longevity from. Obviously the game has a bunch of encounters in the game in and of itself, and these are pretty well done overall. There's a couple of lame ones here and there that are kind of annoying, but the general quality of the interactions is pretty interesting. There is quite a few references to real life stuff. I saw a Team Rocket reference in a fight. I saw a reference to Street Fighter somewhere. I saw a couple of references that I noticed, and I'm really bad at noticing references. So there's very many really interesting fights that'll make you giggle or laugh when you meet them for the first time. But all these things will obviously eventually make you bored. You'll see in all the encounters, you know what is going on, and you can know what you can expect from them. In comes the story builder mode, which is their answer where they say, players, go wild, you can decide how the encounters go. So let's go and go through the tutorial. If I load this file, which is the file they made, they have created an example encounter. And from there, you can have a bunch of options available to you. Now, this part really needs a ton of work. The game's performance cans down here. It doesn't stick to 60 on a main menu window. It uh, has placeholders for basically everything. This is definitely the part they need a lot of work on. But the idea here is that you get an encounter where you have a bunch of narrative, where you have the requirements to enter this narrative. So maybe there's a requirement to have a fighter, or maybe there's a requirement to have a mage or some other requirement. You have the type of island it is, or the type of location on the island. You have the type of inhabitants you will find, as well as the dialogue. Now, obviously, this is all very, very placeholder. Very, very, very placeholder. And this, they need a ton of work on this. Again, I'm saying this is the one part I feel that the game is justifiably in early access for. But the thing here is, though, that because you can create your encounters, this allows you to make your own game. You can make your own stories. You could technically replace all the encounters in the game and make your own encounter story. You can add a thousand encounters and have the randomization options of the entire Steam modding community at your disposal for the longevity of this title. Something that really got me uh, with FDL or many other roguelites was that once I finally figured out the gameplay elements and once I had seen most of the more common encounters, I got bored because there wasn't anything new for me to find or do something that would surprise me. Yes, I could progress further into the story and the interaction because I knew what was happening, but there was no surprises left for me. Overfall has that. I can look on Steam right now and the developer has added a demo environment where they have uploaded a, a demo encounter, which is this one. But they've over uploaded 12 encounters they felt weren't good enough for the final cut of the game. They've uploaded them on the Steam Workshop as an example. These are 12 extra encounters that are not in the game. You can just add them if you want. If you don't think, no, no. If developers tell me they're not up to quality, I'm not going to try them. But if you say, I need more encounters, even if they think they're bad, maybe I like them. You can add those encounters. And you can make them a shelf. You just saw it earlier. If I press this, if I go back, it's over you. You can publish this to workshop. I can make one. I can make a new one called test. Create a new file. And it says Temco's Adventure. And I can add a new encounter to this. Um, let's see. I can add plus a node. And from a node, I can edit the dialogue. 
And he goes into this window and tells me, well, welcome to my first island. There you go. And then it tells you to, hey, well, add a character. Okay. Um, character class, elf blade dancer. Add. Add. And elf soulbinder. Add. There. You can also reverse characters, which so they look at the other side. Uh, there, so they look the other direction. And you can also go story mode, where they can have text. This is amazing. You can build every encounter. If I go back to Story Builder, it says, Welcome to First Island, a choice. You can add a choice. You can either accept or deny. I can set sail here. There we go. And then uh, I add another one. It says Node. You know, it, it is amazing. I really love this. And I hope the developers have the time they need to flesh out this system because. Um, it's damn amazing. It's, it's amazing. This is a very cool system. So that is why I decided to make a review for Overfall. The core gameplay is very cool. It's very interesting. It is very engaging. It is very fun. It looks amazing. But the story builder is what drew me in. The idea that everybody can make their own little island stories. From everything to the tiniest little encounter with a red riding hood up to 20 encounter long spanning sagas i love that and because this game is single player you don't have to worry about balance with multiplayer options you don't have to worry about things like that just go have fun if you want a balanced experience a harder experience a, a easier experience you can tune that based on the encounters you add or not add based on the steam workshop i love it so overfall coming to early access on march 1st all right check it out it's really good so thank you for watching this video. If you like it, press that like button. If you didn't like it, there's a dislike button for exactly that reason. And leave us a comment. Tell us what we can do better or tell us what you really enjoyed on this video. And if you want to see more content on the channel like this and like other content, then uh, press that subscribe button and we will deliver. So until then, I wish you a good day. And until next time, right here on Guy Logic.